Welcome to Nish's Papers. Today we're going to talk about painting up this storm surge. Let's get on to this video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, I use Steinle Res Black Primer to prime up all my miniature bits. I do like to work in sub assemblies. Now, some people had asked me, well, I don't understand the concept of working in sub assemblies. Here is my sub assembly for this big project. And the reason why I work in sub-assembly is because I can give absolute attention to every single piece as if it were its own miniature. Um, I'm going to start here with using Steinle Res White Primer over black. I know, white over black. Can you imagine? That's crazy, right? Not so much so. Uh, not when it comes to actually creating a white armor. Now, I do like doing this because I have that shade of gray that you see right now. I can include highlights if I wanted to from one direction, which I'm going to show you how to do that with white right here. White is a tricky color to paint, but if you unravel the mystery, and learn its tricks and techniques, you should be able to paint white like a pro. All right, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to focus in on the leg portion here and I'm going to start, start with edge highlighting. And when I do edge highlighting, what I do is usually I take a white ink um, and then mix it in with some blue paint for this one uh, because that's thematic now you can mix in a different color with your ink or use a different ink entirely the idea here is to get the paint flowing without it overflowing and that takes a little bit of an adjustment to it you don't want it to spill out of your brush and all over your artwork but you do want it to flow evenly another thing that i help that helps me with edge highlighting is to include a little bit of flow aid um, and drying retarder to make the paint last a little bit longer on the brush. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking Vallejo Metal Color Gold. Uh, it's a bit of a green gold and that's okay with me because I wanted a cold gold to uh, interface with the warm white of the armor and of course the highlight bits which are going to be in red, those pop colors that I have within there. So it kind of works out really well. As you get to see, this kind of looks like a Tron bike, if you know what Tron is. Um, <laughs> I kind of like that kind of look with it. And I'm going to paint up. You see that little blue uh, lens right there? I'm going to show you how to paint that in just a bit. Let's get to the new piece and I'll show you what I'm doing here in order to do little accents like this. And it's little touches like this that set your miniature apart from other people's miniature, especially if they're doing their own type of... Um, um, same model as you and you have it you have that same model on the table and you're like looking at the difference you want yours to kind of stand out a little more so you gotta add these little touches that really really define um, your work as opposed to others now i'm using some underbelly blue um yep i'm using some i use some sotec green that's some temple guard blue and i'm gonna just mix it in you're gonna see a little bit of wet blending going on here um just getting the edges um actually there's two techniques there's the layering part which is here uh to give you that kind of like stark difference and it's kind of easy to do the layering parts as long as you go into a different gradient i'm going to show you wet blending later on in this video all right, so going back, I'm going to actually show you all the parts of this build. It was a massive build. It took me a while to get this video out. In fact, a month to get this video out, partly due to the size of the model and all the details. I kind of wanted to add to it because it is kind of a centerpiece of my army. And since it's like the biggest thing that I'm going to field on the table, I wanted to actually have that really impressive uh, presence. And since it's going to draw so much attention, I want it to look good. So I spent extra time doing this now Mechanicus standard gray uh, a lot of people say oh man I don't know how to paint over white and I don't know how to do it without getting brush strokes but look how fluid this paint is it's very light very fluid forget two thin coats I do like five six seven thin coats uh, ultra thin coats and the thinner the coat as you apply it the less brush strokes you're gonna see it but you do have to wait for it to dry before you add another another layer or another coat so waiting for it to dry and go is essential but it's going to look blotchy at first until it starts filling in 
Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little mixture of mine with some oil paint and some mineral spirits, and I'm using a stick pen just to get into the recesses and allowing the capillary actions to black line um, all those bits. Okay, next up, I'm gonna do some black. I'm painting in the black, um, and this is the torso. And really just getting that in, look at the hand positionings that I do. Getting your hand stable is absolutely essential when it comes to increasing your brush control. Okay, next up, uh, more Mechanicus Standard Gray. Again, doing layers, watering it down. Um, always having those thin coats will add to your model, especially if you're airbrushing and using a hybrid like I do, I airbrush and then I use the paintbrush. You kind of want it to blend in. You don't want to see, well, this one clearly he paintbrushed and this one clearly he airbrushed. You know, you kind of want it to be all harmonious. So in doing so, you do have to work in lighter coats. Uh, so this way you have no streaking lines. So I'm going through and you're going to see, uh, I'm actually going to include the build process uh, throughout the entire miniature as I put it together. Uh, and you can see why I build in sub assemblies. I'm literally giving like 100% attention to each piece as if it was its own miniature, like this leg. I paint it fully as if it were its own little miniature and I put all the attention to detail. I don't get distracted by all the other pieces. And also it's easier for me to reach all the areas um, when it's in sub assembly. That being said, I try to assemble it as much as I can um, without it impeding the brush strokes that I want to get into and all the details uh, on the reach that I can get to get all the details. Um, so I try to build it as much as I possibly can uh, while still retaining uh, the ability to get to, into all those details. So two things, making sure you have all the details and the second thing is making sure you can reach all the details with your brush. Okay, so a lot of these techniques are going to be repeated just like the edge highlighting and here's the build process for the leg as well, all coming together, all coming together. Um, and it's interesting because you can uh, you can see as I'm assembling the legs, you may say to yourself, hey, what about that blue lens that you painted earlier? Well, here it is. See that? It's hiding underneath. So as you see it from the right angle, you gotta kinda have a little Easter egg going on there. And I love looking at models and finding out where the Easter eggs are uh, <laughs> that I kind of hide and other people, other painters hide as well. You can see that a lot when painting for competition, you're gonna see a lot of little hidden kind of gems as the, as the, um, the judge or the judges actually grade someone's work. They kind of want to look at something and find something that, you know, is memorable. Okay, time for some Evil Sun Scarlet. And that's going to be the red that I'm going to use for this uh, model. Uh, usually it's Mephiston Red, uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then I go over to an orange as a total highlight. Okay, building the legs together, slowly coming together as you can see. Now, of course, as you're building like this, if you need to touch up any area and go back, you can fix it as you go. But yeah, this is how I paint. I, this is how I paint models, especially big models, uh, is that I sub-assemble and then I slowly build it as I paint it. Um, and this way I know that everything is going to be given my full attention and everything is going to fit well. Now, of course, you know, you have some of the seam lines that you want to take care of and bigger pieces that have seam lines, you want to sub-assemble those. Um, but the majority of it is uh, like these pieces that kind of like go together at the end. Now, what we have here instead of putting it all together and building it all at once and then painting it. What you have here is an extended arm. Now this actually does not come with a kit uh, and this is the only uh, variance that I added to it. So I, I went on and uh, I picked up some of the extended arms. I did not like 
And I got them from Shapes, Shapeways. Now, I did not like the way that the arms kind of like with the Storm Surge go all the way up to the shoulders. It has no arms. So it's kind of Tyrannosaurus Rex-ish. And it's like, you know, I, I just couldn't do it. So um, I looked up some solutions and I found on Shapeways that they actually had extension uh, arms for Storm Surge. And I think if you look up Shapeways and look for Storm Surge, you can see that extra bits that come with the arms and there's, there's a couple of options that you can find on there which is really great because really having those arms stuck onto the shoulders um, just really I, I think ruins the kind of overall feel of the model the presence of the model so having those arms there I just I, I found that as to be essential okay there we are uh, again using the process with the um, with the oil paints watered down with some mineral spirits and doing the uh, recess, um, like recess mold lines, recess, getting all the recesses in with the black. And it really does work well with the oil paints, it's an oil wash. And you notice that I'm very specific with my washes. I just don't spend a, like splatter them all over the place. I'm very controlled with it. That's why I'm using a stick pen. Um, so this way I can accurately get into the recesses. And sometimes I have to apply that more than once. And that's okay. Um, just to realize that if you're working with oil paints, it does take a while to dry. I usually, if I'm doing a piece, I leave the um, oil recessed washes um, towards the end of the project, towards the end of the evening when I'm done painting, um, the end of the session, and then I'll just leave it for the 24 hours. I'll like sleep, the next day I come at it, and then it's dry enough that I can work with it, maybe do another coat if I need to. Now, if you don't want to do that, inks work well. Uh, I'm gonna put this little bit of ink in between there so you can see but i just find that using the oil paints is so much more forgiving because it takes so long to dry that i can actually if i i miss that and you're going to see a couple of places where i put too much of it on you can always go in with a q-tip and just rub it off as it dries a little uh you just re-wet your q-tip just a little bit moisten your uh, q-tip with some mineral uh spirits and you could wipe off any mistakes that uh you have so it's really really cool and very very forgiving uh all right so time for the guns uh that is placed underneath the uh left arm yes arm i love that uh, of the storm surge uh, and then the missile pod that goes on the top of each uh, missile launcher, the ones on his hands um, right there. So just going back and forth. As something dries, I paint something else. Another cool thing I believe on, on sub-assembly is you can really just, if you need a one piece to dry, uh, you can set it aside and work on something else, you know, because there's plenty of little sub-assembly or plenty of little projects to do. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to do Tanica Standard Gray. Uh, I was doing it on airbrush onto the hands, and then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to paint in that little shield that goes onto the left arm as well. That left arm of the Storm Surge really has a lot of firepower and a lot of things going on to it. So not only does it have the missile pods, the the, the uh, another missile pod here on the top, uh, it also has missiles underneath. Uh, larger missiles and then underneath that it has uh, two guns now you can use a different kinds of guns there you can do cyclic ion blasters or anything else that you want to use in there I just decided to go in with the anti-infantry guns that come with the model kit uh, and I didn't want to do any you know there's any of the photon blasters I think it is and or or the um, the uh, um, the fire launchers like I didn't want to mess with that all right, so time for that shield. Now I'm gonna do a red background, uh, and that means I paint the actual innards red, uh, Wild Rider Red, but you can use all kinds of red. Um, Wild Rider Red is the uh, extreme highlight for it, but you can use all kinds of different colors to do this. It's a very common technique that you wanna paint the recesses one color and then go on top and do your um, top coat with a different color right there. And you can use that technique with a lot of different models um, to get that recessed one color. Um, it really works very, very well. Um, I was very careful with this. I'm doing all of them and then coming back and doing some edge highlighting just to define where the tau symbol is as opposed to 
uh, the rest of the piece and I want it to stick out. Edge highlighting does a wonderful job of letting things pop, you know. Uh, Games Workshops actually does that with, with all their models. They edge highlight every single armor panel because it really makes it pop. It's not really realistic, so to speak, but then again, it's fence fancy models and you know you can paint your models how you wish and that's one thing i want to express you can you can use recipes if you want to but as you gain experience and stuff you don't have to stick to recipes uh you could just use whatever colors you got you know um but i understand that there's safety in knowing what a recipe is and what colors that i use but honestly whatever you have on your shelf you want to make work make it work and it'll look cool absolutely all right so now that i have this i'm going to put the shield on Again, fully built. Can you imagine with that shield on, if I wanted to get behind there, how hard it would be to get behind the shield if I didn't uh, sub-assemble that, see? And just for ease of use. Because I was uh, I was criticized actually on Facebook saying that, oh, why do you sub-assemble? I, I just don't get it and that's too much. That's, in, you know, I say the results speak for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my methodology. I'm not saying everybody should do it um, because, you know, you got to do what works for you. But hey, all I'm saying is try it and see what happens. OK, now I'm going to do every single one of these missiles in black first. And it takes a while. <laughs> I have to admit. Um, but, you know, having all these missiles, I mean, the firepower in this thing is absolutely insane. All right, um, underbelly blue from uh, P3. That's what I'm using for lens first. I'm trying something different there. Uh, and I'm gonna go back with some blues. Evil Sun Scarlet now. I'm gonna do the red um, lens that's also on the hands. And people notice the hands because of all the missile pods. So I kinda wanna add a little more detail to the hands, to these lenses, to get them to shine and make them kind of almost reflective. Uriel Yellow is what I use for the caps of each one of these missiles. Now I just tap it on top. That's it, just tap it on top. And that's why I go, some people are like, oh my gosh, how do you do all those missile pods? They're just little taps. That's all, it's a fully loaded brush, little taps. As you go, notice that the paint is not going to the ferrule. Try to avoid getting any paint in the ferrule. If you do get paint in the ferrule, please, uh, you want to do yourself a favor and rinse that out. All right, going some celestial gray. I just wanted, because I wanted to do a different gray to pop out uh, from the Mechanica standard gray that's in the background. And I'm doing the tips of these larger missiles as well. I'll tell you, this was actually a fun build, although it did take a lot longer than expected. Uh, Wild Router Red now, I'm going to go and do that lens and show you how I, um, how I paint lenses, uh, red lenses that is. So I brace my hand, I on the bottom uh, achieve a lighter red, yep. and then I just do a, a little dot, a boop, a little shine on the top, like boop, <laughs> that's it. There you go. Okay, <laughs> now it has dimension. And I'm just trying to get the edge a little more. I'm just playing around with that. There you go. There you go. Uh, and then I played around with going fully around. Yeah, when it comes to painting, you can really take it in a lot of different directions. Uh, but there it is. Uh, and now for that, uh, I'm going to go for the celestial gray. Maybe make that boop or the shine pop out just a little bit more. There it is. <laughs> Just a little dot. You're gonna notice that uh, very much so. I am I try to be as controlled as possible. I use a finely tipped brush so I can put in those small little details that really do make a world of difference when it comes to painting because it really just adds that wow factor, that dimension uh, to any kind of lens or any kind of small uh, painting. Like if you're painting eyes and you put the little reflective white dot on it, I mean, that's like, oh, right it's like pretty cool so you may want to um take your time on some of the bits that get noticed more um and add those details and get yourself a really fine tip brush i'm using a raphael uh i think it's 108 uh four and you can use winter and newtons uh, i like their series seven brushes their rounds all right time to do the blue lens 
uh, a little different than the layering that I did for uh, the leg earlier. Uh, this is a little more of a, well, sort of a wet blending technique because the paint is still wet and I'm going in with it with another color, kind of just blending it in, uh, trying to get those uh, the details in there while the paint is wet. So blending a little bit, allowing the... Uh, the fluidity kind of like to roll in. It's sort of like doing tile art. If you even know what that is, if you have like a ceramic tiles and you kind of pour paint on top of it and let the paint kind of like intermingle, that's sort of what I'm trying to do here. All right, so I got the ring around, I got the little boop going on. Um, I think I might play around with it more. I don't know, I go back and forth with that. <laughs> and that's the wonderful part of painting. You go back and forth, you kind of, add more details how do you see fit you know all right building that arm now the sub assemble becoming a larger sub assemble because as it's painted it's assembled even more and it's not going to be attached to the body till later so this is essentially still a sub assemble until i assemble it completely later <laughs> but there it is you know it really does stand out with those lenses all right, back to the stick pan, back doing the oil washes, recess washes, very, very controlled with them and um, really just having fun because it's I'm letting it do the work for me. Uh, if you've never tried this technique, I encourage you to, just, you know, try it, go for it, see what, uh, see what it looks like. I love the results. <laughs> All right, do some more edge highlighting on that subassembled arm on both of the arms, actually use the side of the brush instead of the tip of the brush. Uh, an artist once told me if you're using the side of the brush, you're edge highlighting, but if you're using a tip of the brush, then you're, um, you're actually straight painting. <laughs> you're free handing, you know, because you're using the tip of the brush, you have to have all that ultra control. Let the brush work for you by using the side of the brush instead of the tip of the brush to get these lines in. And it will save you a lot of time and trouble. All right, back with the oil washes here on the main body. Um, this time I'm actually doing the oil washes first before I put in all the other pieces. So once that is done, I'm gonna go with some olive green. I'm gonna paint all the panels. There's a lot of buttons here. A lot of, some people don't notice that there's two people that are controlling this storm surge all the way on the top. Two little dudes, two little towel people all the way on the top here, uh, just, just chilling. And they have like an entire control panel and it's pretty neat. Uh, at first, I never noticed that there were people controlling it and it was, it was open cockpit. Like you can see right into it. So I wanted to do it justice and spend some time with it. Play, I played around though. Uh, usually when I paint, I try different techniques. I just play around with it. This is straight wet blending. Uh, <laughs> you get to see me go back and just intermingle the paint, put a lighter color, dab it here, watch it bleed through, go on the bottom, tap that there, rinse it out, coming back. Um, hitting it again with the darker green in the middle, kind of blend those two colors in the middle, uh, just a little bit, poking it here, allowing the paint to just drip wherever it wants to kind of drip on that little surface there, just to give it that like kind of glow, uh, that reflective glow. And there it is, a uh, little funky there, and <laughs> I like the little funky things, but it also comes together as I continue painting it. So yeah, so now I do green, because I want to limit my color palette here, so I'm going to do um, four colors, and that's pretty much it. The green, uh, I wanted to add to the screens. You're not going to really see green anywhere else, except for some, some of these buttons, and I'm alternating which buttons, kind of what I want to hit with that green, because I'm going to fill it up with the other colors, and I do want it to intermingle and kind of like look like a cockpit with a whole bunch of different colors. I'm thinking like a Star Wars kind of cockpit uh, going on with that. Now I'm going to go back with a livery green, a highlight, and I'm actually doing highlights to every single button. So I'm painting the button. Button, but I'm doing highlights on every single button. That is going to be essential because it makes it pop, makes it glow. Now I'm gonna go Mephisto on red and I'm gonna do Evil, Evil Sun Scarlet to make that highlight. Uh, and then I come back with Wild Rider red for the super highlights to really make it grow. And I'll glow and I'll show you. I'm gonna start with Mephisto on red and I'm gonna go hit all the buttons that I think I want uh, Mephisto on red. I'm just gonna go around here and I'm not gonna overwhelm them and do all the buttons because I wanted, I didn't want it to be too Christmas tree-ish. And you're gonna see that. That's why I break it up with blue later on. 
Um, there it is with the Wild Rider um, with the secondary color, Evil Sun Scarlet's, and then Wild Rider Red. I'm just poking little dots at it just to make it glimmer. And you're gonna see that there's a contrast there. <laughs> so much fun. All right, but still, it's, it has the Christmas tree complex. So what do we do about that? All right, start with dark Prussian blue as my base. Then Sotek green is going to be my mid-tone. And then for a highlight, I'm going to do a temple guard blue. And if I even wanted to choose something like a, a sky blue or something like that, I could pull in something like a war colors uh, blue number one or any kind of sky blue if you're painting at home with this, just to break it up. All right, so let's get to it. Time for the blue, dark Prussian blue first, and it almost looks black, and that's cool, because it gets that deep, deep blue. I want a darker color right there. I'm starting super dark, so when I put the brights in, it really pops, right? All right, so I'm gonna hit all the areas that I want blue, and these are all the remaining buttons that I have not painted. So I'm just gonna go with it um, and really get into it. Now I'm going for Sotek green, and there goes the highlight color. <laughs> right there, Temple Guard blue. Uh, so it's one, two, and three, doing a little bit of layering, and you can see, like, that's pretty dynamic. <laughs> that's a lot of buttons for, for what most people are not really going to see, you know? But of course, underbelly blue, mixing that with some white ink, and getting some highlights going on, going to edge highlights, because everything in the Tau, everything has black uh, of Tau, I always wind up edge highlighting it. It really just makes it pop. Uh, black is so dull if you don't have variation to it and the edge highlights really make it stand out I mean like night and day like there it is and I'm gonna add a little bit of white maybe a button or two just to just to brighten things up right there there you go <laughs> pretty cool stuff all right time for the front fascia now these pieces right here they do not come separate so I have to hand paint them black and that's fine uh, those even strokes help out and then there's a screen back here, kind of want to paint black as well, uh, that comes together with it. Now, uh, some mechanics of standard gray again. Got to hit in some of that, uh, that gray on the carapace right there. Now I'm going to go to the back edge highlight. I, the little bits in the back, the generator in the back, once that's done with all the edge highlights, I added some Sotek blue to the edge highlights. And I'm just going to set that in the back there. You're going to see all the details and literally seeing this project come together. It's pretty cool. All right. So there is the screen that's on the inside of the carapace that I have to paint separately. It's so odd, but it looks really cool. It's like the monitors that are in their faces. Uh, again, going with um, wet blending, livery green, uh, <laughs> olive green, and um, just, just bringing it up in between, uh, just like an intermediate green. And I go back and forth, just adding some, allowing the paint to mix uh, a little bit. And very good, very simple, very quick, uh, easy kind of to do. Do it while it's wet, allow it to blend a little bit. And uh, there you go. All right, let's see what it happens when it dries. When it dries, it really is cohesive. You gotta trust in the process right there. Uh, there it is, looking pretty cool, pretty snazzy. <laughs> Edge highlighted up, highlighted or high lit. All right, I'm gonna do the radar one over there. That looks pretty cool too. Just to match all the buttons and stuff like that that are in the cockpit and just adding that as well. Ah, it looks neat. It just all comes together, you know? Kind of funky. I like it. All right, back with the stick pen. Again, doing oil washes. Again, any, anything that goes over, you can always clean up later. Um, and then some gold here on the front fascia. Now, people usually notice the front fascia, so take your time and embrace your hand when it comes to these things. Uh, and I'm using a throwaway brush to do all my golds and metallics because I don't want to ruin my nice tip brushes. All right, time for some black on the actual guys, and I'm going to paint the guys up. Uh, red on the shoulder pads, uh, same reds that we've been using. I try to limit my color palette, so it's like when I say red, it's the same kind of Mephiston red. That Wild Rider gets in there, uh, <laughs> and then Evil Sun Scarlet, you know, this is all the same. Uh, going in with some oil washes again for the dudes. You see really coming together here. Uh, again, the heads are sub-assembled because I wanted to paint the heads. They're, I didn't want to paint the helmets. Um, 
I wanted to paint them with their open faces, so I'm just going to show you a simple way to do that. Troll bud uh, base, so I'm just going to do some base gum and underbelly blue. That's it. That's all I take for it. I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so first thing is first. I'm going to base coat it with the darker color, and you can do this with any blue. It doesn't matter. Whatever blue that you like, just as long as you have a, a darker tone and then a lighter tone. So here's the base coat, and I'm just going to brush that on and just like do two thin coats and brush that on and not even worried about it. So once it's on there, I go with an airbrush on the top and I zenithal highlight it. That's it. That's as simple as it gets, right? Uh, and it adds it adds shadows, it adds stuff like that to it, and it's great. Later on, if you want to define the shadows, I do with a wash. But I use the wash, Dragon Off Nightshade, differently than a lot of other people. I actually try to paint with it. That means I get into the mouth, I get underneath the chin, just to add the contrast to it. I paint around the... the the um, leather and metal bits that are around his head and his eyewear and I just paint with it that's what I do <laughs> interesting right now I'm gonna add a little bit of red in the eyes because I give them red eyes I'm gonna add some red in that mouth again you can use any red you want um, I think that was evil sun scarlet yeah that's it evil sun scarlet for the mouth right there all right so time to build it <laughs> I'm gonna set the bodies in. It's kind of funky how they kind of sit there, but they do. They just kind of sit or half sit and get half the body and kind of put it on to the rest of it. Kind of funky. I love it. <laughs> um, definitely different. Certainly different. All right, time to put the heads on. And this eye just assemble the heads. Just bloop. Very simple. You kind of want the heads to be facing forward to look at those monitors that are in front of them. So that is that is something to consider right there. Uh, you don't want them to look all the way back or, you know, kind of like, you know, maybe maybe if you cock the head a little bit, it'd be fine. But, you know, <laughs> you don't want them to be uh, looking up at the sky or something like that with the monitors. Uh, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't think you could cock the head back too far with these. All right, time to put the front face on and cover up all that detail. <laughs> Unless people really, really take a look at your army. If it's on the field, though, uh, tabletop, you know, people don't really kind of look in the cockpit so much. Unless people know storm surges and know that it's an open cockpit and they say, well, how'd you handle the cockpit? You know, what details did you add? And when, when people do that to mine, I want them to be like, whoa, check that out. Uh, and I... <laughs> I want, I want yours to be that way too. <laughs> so it'd be kind of cool. If you want to share your work, you can share on the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion on Facebook. So I do have that as well. All right, time to paint, uh, paint up the vent. I'm going to do black on the inside. My black is usually Vallejo model color black. And then I do, uh, I'm going to do the gray areas over here as well. Yep, looking great. Again, doing multiple layers. It's basically the same techniques for a lot of these things, but slowly building it up, adding some golds, adding some reds, uh, doing the Mechanica Standard Gray, doing some edge highlighting. It's continued throughout the model and that adds consistency to it. But we're gonna change things up later on by adding a lot of different stickers, uh, well, transfers, decals. And um, the decals that I use are a little different than what most people use for the Tau. I'm embracing that they're anime kind of style. So I'm using a uh, Gumpla or a Gundam kind of um, uh, transfers. And I mix them in with the Tau transfer to really embrace that anime kind of feel to it. And I think, it, I think they're cool and if anybody criticizes me for that that's on them i mean really they need to surgically remove this stick from their rear <laughs> i think a lot of people are uptight in this hobby i gotta say a lot of people are uptight you know to chill out and have some fun all right so i'm gonna mix this with some ink now i'm gonna just do some glazing with that airbrush you're gonna see that i zenithal prime this so it has shadows underneath and I want it to be really bright, so I'm adding that Evil Sun Scarlet with the uh, red from Vallejo Game Color. And the red that comes out is a super red, like bright. You can see it from, talk about spot color, man, that just does it right there. Okay, time to add some details to the back exhaust system. I'm just gonna add some black in there. Uh, and 
uh, just do some details, add some gold uh, later on as well. And these are kind of cool. They're like small little vents to keep the storm surge. Like if it leans one way, it, it actually has an exhaust, I don't know, like a flame vent to, to kind of push the entire armor another way. It's kind of neat. Um, it can be, and I think they do sell it. You can actually put wings and attach it to where these things attach to and like have that Gundam kind of look to it as well. I've seen some of that and it looks pretty cool. Um, if you wanted to have wings onto this thing, uh, but you could really take it as far as you want to take it. Um, this army right here, I don't know if I'm going to keep it or sell it after I paint it. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's it's a huge, huge army. Uh, it's, essentially, I have four battle force boxes I haven't even touched yet that I'm going to add to this army. So it's going to be a huge army. I think I'm going to have more points of Tau than I do of Space Wolves currently. And my Space Wolves are my main army, so I think that's what's going to happen there. I don't like to talk of points too much because I don't even have the codex, so I'm, I don't know. I might play this army. I don't know. Eh, maybe I'll sell it. We'll see. All right, time for that stick pen again. Going on to this theme. Coming in the clutch. Got some oil paint, and I use Winton oil paint. Um, Windsor and Newton Winton oil paint. And I mix it up with some uh, mineral spirits. Very easy. All right, painting black inside the uh, face pieces uh, within there. There are two heads. Some people don't notice that there are two heads um, attached to this storm surge. The main one on top and one to the right hand side. It's underneath the honking gun that goes to the, to, to the right hand side of the model. So that's why a lot of people overlook it. But it is pretty cool, so I'm going to add a lot of detail. And like any miniature, you want the face to really pop. People relate to a miniature by looking at the face and saying, okay, it has a face, it has arms, it has legs. Okay, I got that. You know, so, you know, we try to humanize everything. <laughs> we just do. I think it's human nature. All right, Sotek Green is going to be the base for this. I'm going to do the lenses for the eyes. I'm going to see micro movements. I restrict my hand's movement by leaning it on my thumb. You see that? Um, so I have one part of my hand and three fingers on the paintbrush. Three fingers on the paintbrush, really limiting and adding to that control. I'm using Warcolor's Blue Number One, which you can use any kind of light blue right here. Uh, and I just wanted to add that contrast. And I'm gonna add it to the middle of each one. I wanted to glow in the center of each one. So starting trying to do something new with this kind of lens, playing around. I love big models because you can really play around with a lot of little, de little details and, and add your own and make your own style with it um, but this is another way to do it if you want to glow in the center of uh, the eyes it's pretty cool uh, you go around and do most of the areas with the darker color and then the lighter color just on the middle of the, of the raised edge and it just adds like the glow to it all right now edge highlighting around each one of these uh, lenses it's gonna make a huge difference, really add some dimension to it. Again, if you just have black, it looks kind of flat. So uh, I do edge highlighting on black, period, on all black surfaces, kind of give it that Tron look. And it and the Tron look works for the Storm Surge, for the Tau in general. A Tau uh, does look like that futuristic Tron kind of thing going on, and it's pretty cool. It really is pretty cool. But again, you have to restrict your movement, you know? Um, so you have to brace your hands. All right, just adding some more detail to it. Uh, just gonna add with those throwaway brushes, the metallic paint, because metallic paint will ruin your nice brushes. Uh, and doing both heads here with that as well. I'm actually, my gold paint is kind of chunky because it's like literally at the end of the bottle. I actually threw away the gold paint after I finished painting this model. I mean, that, that was it. I mean, I just used it all up. So this is all like the, the bottom of the barrel and I'm still painting with it because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a generation Xer. We kind of use things until they fall apart, right? <laughs> we kind of get every bit out of everything we buy, 150%. We'll use it until, uh, I'll use my car until the wheels fall off, and I have a, I have a Honda, so it's gonna last forever. 
<laughs> Someone said, "Oh, I'm getting my um, my Honda to three hundred thousand. I want to get it to four hundred thousand, and I'm like, challenge accepted. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I bought it new, so a lot of miles. All right, putting the top torso onto the body. Now it's really starting to come together. Finally, I finished the torso. And once I finish the torso, now I can attach the arms as well. Like it's really just going to come together. Pretty cool stuff. Um." Super excited to get this on. Getting the heads on right now. Getting, the head, getting my head on straight. Now you can tilt the, the heads in any direction you want to. I kind of just wanted the straight ahead thing. I'm just going to do it that way. Maybe a little crook into it. Nah, I don't know. Just messing around with it. Uh, and you can really do it any way. Uh, it's very tough to get that wrong. And um, really cool stuff. I was debating on whether to glue it down to the base or not glue it down to the base. Uh, this miniature because usually what I do is I I do the base separately and then I, I put it on uh, but this time I'm gonna do something a little differently speaking of which I'm gonna have a part two to this video and the part two of the video is going to do the base just the diorama base uh, I'm gonna have some I'm gonna make some drones custom drones that are gonna be flying around I'm gonna have like a missile going at it uh, it's gonna be kind of neat and dynamics so again this is like one of the centerpieces of this army so i kind of really want to spend some time to add that extra level of detail to it i know i'm rushing uh or speed painting through the rest of the army which is actually coming out pretty decently but um this bad boy this chunky monkey i wanted him to be um i wanted him to be or her to be uh really really uh lavished with a lot of details right. so now, one thing I didn't do is didn't add transitions to a lot of this. Um, I could have added transitions to the mechanic of standing gray, but I don't know. I already didn't add the transitions to the rest of the army, so eh. I didn't want to A, spend the time, and B, the extra time on top of all the time that I'm spending, that is. Uh, and then B, uh, I didn't want it to be uh, different from the rest of my armies. Okay, time to put in the shoulder now shoulder again does not come with the kit this is again on shape ways in which i picked it up and pretty cool piece i was very generous when it came to the glue there uh because it is this kind of like resiny see-through piece and i wasn't sure if it'll fall apart so i want to make sure that it's like it is on there and on there very well um, so i'm going to do the shoulders for both of them and i extended one of the arms out and the other one is short reason because the short arm is going to have the big old hunk and gun on that side and then the other arm i kind of wanted to, to just extend it out a little bit so it has a variation like almost like punching and then with this arm so alternating it's kind of cool yeah <laughs> definitely kind of cool getting the arm position was a little tricky you had to hold it there for in place but once it got stuck in there uh again really generous when it came to the glue I really wanted it, like even if I bang into it, I don't want the arm to fall off because I added so much detail to it that it, it'll be kind of rough. It'll be kind of rough if uh, I'll be a little heartbroken if it fall off, fell off and chipped or something like that. So I want to make sure that that does not happen and that it's secure. That's super important. Looking pretty good. All right. Now in the final throws, I'm going to get, and I decided to glue the uh, miniature to the base for the first time, actually, in my miniature painting career. So, <laughs> all right, time for the gun. Now, while I was painting the honking missile cannon gun that's on his shoulder, I was actually talking to my buddy Freak from the Frost and Fist channel. Check them out if you haven't seen them before. Great group of guys. And uh, we were just like chatting on the side and I was just painting this right here and filming while I was just chit-chatting. And then, uh, you know, I voiced over a little bit. So <laughs> I, um, I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was certainly a lot of fun. All right. So um to chit chat with my buddy and paint this up and i told him yeah, you gotta watch the part when i do the honk and gun because you know i'm gonna mention you yeah <laughs> right there um uh, all right now went super fluid with this because it's a large area so i loaded my brush maybe a little bit too much that's okay <laughs> It's painting. There are no like rules and stuff like that. Who cares? You know, just have some fun with it. You know, loosen up. Have some fun with some paint. What's the worst that can happen? I repainted white and start over again. Um, all right. <laughs> so what? 
no, no, I'll whip out the airbrush and paint it white and start over again. No big deal. All right. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to do this little radar bit right here. Um, and that goes over the left hand side. Yeah, I could have done a lot of different uh, things for there, but I kind of like the radar thingy. It looks like sort of like a bullseye. Almost looks like if you ever, <laughs> if you ever went to a carnival and you throw the, like the baseball at the guy and, and sink him in the dunk tank. <laughs> I always thought that was kind of neat. All right, this part I was hesitant on painting. I was thinking I was going to, you know, um, paint it up a little differently, like airbrush it and then mask it off and do it that way. But I decided to hand brush that, and there we go. <laughs> I just figured go really, really fluid and liquidy and just get in there and paint it. I'm not afraid to try something now. I'm not afraid. Uh, and beating that fear makes you a better painter because you try things you normally wouldn't try. Well, I can't do it like that. I'd never be able to do it like that. Yeah, well, that kind of neg negative self-talk makes you makes ensures that you never will do it like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> can't be good at something you're not practicing so you have to practice the technique you know um and then i went in and started painting this area down here as well again control is the epitome now i knew it was going to get into the ferrule doing it this liquidy so i'm using my throwaway brushes to be able to do this base coat um so i'm not using my good brushes for that and I'm going to go all the way around the black, uh, the, the downside of this as well. And it's, it's actually pretty, it's pretty liberating because I'm always so worried about, you know, it not coming out even when I do large surfaces like that, but it's really, it's cool. It's fine. It works out just fine. You know, don't worry about it. Hey, forget about it. You know, that's what they say in Brooklyn. All right. <laughs> So now that's all painted on pretty well and good, I am gonna just do the black pieces and the vents as well. Again, keeping it thematic, that all uh, black and white. It's hard to go wrong with that. That's always in style, you know? <laughs> so black and white is definitely uh, pretty cool. Uh, and, and then the gold and blue and red, and that's pretty much it. There you go. <laughs> red, white, blue, and black. I mean, there you go. There you go. <laughs> a little bit more some black, black on these little pegs that come out as well. I mean, it really is. It was, it's so satisfying to be done with this miniature. Will I paint another storm surge? Probably not. Yeah. Cause after a while with big projects like this, it becomes a marathon. Like you look at it and you're like, man, gotta hit it again. And everybody who paints large miniatures, yeah, and wants to do it to a higher quality. You know what I'm talking about. You have to really love the the thing that you're painting because it's going to be a marathon. If you don't think this is a cool model, then it's going to be really tough for you to paint it. That's why I had to add the arms. The storm surge with the arms up here just wasn't cool enough for me. And I wouldn't have been able to paint the model. But now that it has the arms and it looks kind of dynamic, I'm like all about it. So that actually energized, those arms energized me to paint the miniature. That's what it did. And sometimes you need to do that. Third party the sucker, you know, get some bits, make it happen, uh, add some new decals to it. Whatever it is that makes you want to sit down at the table and spend a couple of more hours, because you, you've already spent like 50, 60, uh, spend a couple of more hours <laughs> uh, painting up, then, yeah, that's what you need to do to motivate you, right? It has to be cool. That's why my army is usually not that effective, usually, because I paint with my heart. I paint what's cool, and that's what brings me to the painting table. If not, I wouldn't paint anything, period. So I try to make sure that I, um, that I paint something cool that I find interesting. And if it's not cool enough for me, I just want, I don't care if it's really good on the field or not. I'm just not going to do it. Now, some people only uh, paint these models to play the game. Like they play the game and then, oh, great. I have to paint them too. That's not me. I paint the models and even if I don't play them, I'm cool with them in my cabinet. And then people come over and be like, ooh, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> like this one here. Uh, I might, I, I'll, I think I'll pick up the Tau Codex when it comes out. But, and then I'll maybe play them against my Space Wolves and see how that is. 
All right, this one's going to take a little cleaning up. I got a little gold on the white. That's easy to remedy up. Maybe put some more Mechanicus Standard Gray onto the gray parts. And that's no big deal. I can always go back and do that. And you can do that to taste yourself. Some people like it blotchy. Uh, once you hit it with a um, with a, um, a dull coat or matte varnish, it really just unifies everything. So, But just be careful and be cognizant that if you hit a matte varnish on a metallic, it's going to get rid of the sheen. That's what matte paint does. Uh, so you may want to touch up with some gold at the end. So, all right, doing the radar bits right there, uh, the tip there, uh, pretty cool. Again, I was using a throwaway brush, uh, so pretty interesting. Uh, time for the final touches. We're getting we're getting through it. So I subassembled here, came in in the clutch because I painted all the highlights of the glowing parts of that, and then I ins inserted it, and it looks so cool. <laughs> it was so much easier to paint. Then doing details on that too. I had to paint the, the edges of this as well, uh, the sides. And just adding that, unifying the piece with the rest of the model. Man, super fun to do and to bring to you because a lot of people are intimidated by this. All right, so this one I wanted it to be a little bit dirty. Uh, so I got some oil paint and I kind of like stuck it on there on the middle portions and then i'm like well i can't leave it like that uh so let me let me tint it let me glaze over it with some sotec green and do it as if it's a glowing generator but a dirty glowing generator because it's been in use for a little while i know the only dirty thing in the entire uh build <laughs> so after i do that um and give it the highlight treatment like i did the buttons earlier in the cockpit you have the generator going on there uh, and it looks dark in the recesses. Pretty fun. All right, now these little nubs. These are cool. I mean, they're a lot of fun to put on. They're a lot of fun because it, I always thought this is one of the defining things of this rail gun, this huge cannon, uh, was these little things that popped out. I didn't even know what they were. Uh, in some instances, part of me wants to do it, and you could do it yourself on yours, make yours a little different than mine. Um, some of these... Um, I don't know what to call them, little pipes or, or things that are popping out, uh, are flat. Now, you could give it and make it like a lens, like do that wet blending like I did for earlier with the lenses, and you can make them like into lenses, and that would be kind of cool too. So it looks like there's something inside of them, like glowing. I mean, some people do the glowing. Uh, I just did it gold. Um, at this point in the model, I was like, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I, I want it done at this point. And, and that's where I get some of my models, especially the big ones. Um, I get to a point of it where I'm like, yeah, I just done, done sounds good. Done sounds good. And you need to know when to stop because literally you can add uh, details to infinity and then you'll only have one thing that you painted. Yeah, so you gotta be careful with that. Especially with big projects for me because I like to take my time with them and you kind of get stuck in that trap. <laughs> you kind of get stuck in that trap. Um, but yeah, these things, I don't know. It's sort of like, I don't know, like almost medical or kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what to talk like the syringe with the big things on the side. I don't know. Really weird. Uh, but cool. Definitely cool. But yeah, you see how they're flat up there. I painted them gold. You can paint them anything you want. Um, all right. Now to put the, uh, little sight on it. I guess the electronic site, and I'm just going to lean it down into there, uh, make it cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool stuff. All right. Now some edge highlighting on the radar, the little baseball dunk thing. I had to let it dry while I did all the other stuff. Again, working in sub assembles certainly helps and controlling your hand motion. So this way you can get little details like this also helps and be very careful with it. Um, but if you have that gentleness on little bits like that, you can increase your brush control. All right, time to put on the radar onto the big build. And we're just about there. <laughs> we're just about there. Look at this. Looks gorgeous. I am, I couldn't be happier. All right, time for the decals. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go through every single decal that I put on there. I'm gonna show you pictures afterwards to show you when I am done putting in the decals. But just to know that you, I take a brush and I kind of slide them off once they're wet and they're, they're moving and then I could just position them with the brush. 
So that's an easy way to do it. Microsola Microset uh, works uh, as well. And then you want to dye it down with a matte varnish uh, so it doesn't have the sheen onto it. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of stickers to it. And you're going to see in the final uh, photos um, and they're going to be popping up. And it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I, I really think it's very, very transformative when I put on all these decals, um, especially the Gundam ones. And it looks pretty, pretty awesome. All right, here are the end pictures. Uh, yup, awesome. Uh, you see a lot of Japanese going on there. Um, I didn't put a lot of matte varnish on there just yet. I didn't seal it up just yet, uh, but I am. I will uh, put it on there to just to die down the sheen of some of the decals. But uh, decals came out pretty cool. I think it's very unique. And incorporating with the towel design, I think it's pretty neat as well. Um, this was an interesting build. It took a while to get it done, but I think the end result uh, is worth it. Definitely tabletop worthy. Definitely if you're in uh, your gaming club and you see this on the table, you're like, whoa, okay, that's pretty cool. you know. And then you check out the entire army. It's like, whoa. Um, not for competition. This is my tabletop quality. This is what I want to feel on a tabletop when I come into a game store. And um, yeah, absolutely. Alrighty, so let's get back on here. I do want to thank a couple of people. First, I want to do the socials here. Uh, my Facebook group is the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion on Facebook. I do have an Instagram at the Miniatures Paintbrush. I'm not very good at Instagram. I'm still working at it. And then we have the Patreon at um, slash the miniatures paintbrush. If you would like to support me and like what I'm doing, would like to support me that way. If you don't want to do that that way, that's fine. Sharing this video with other people you think might be interested is the kindest thing you can do to the channel. It helps grow the channel and get this video to other people out there. Uh, and, and we can share uh, tips, techniques, and tricks all together as a community. Uh, I do want to thank my Patreon members. Uh, we have Mike McBroom and Emily Yasesco, who are constant and avid supporters. I want to thank them every episode. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching this video and see, staying through it to the entire end. I know it's a longer video. That was a big model. Now I'm going to do another video on the second half. This is part two of the storm surge and it's going to be a diorama base. So I'm going to have like a lot of things flying over there. I want to make custom drones kind of flying over there and maybe a missile being launched through that. That's my ideas. It's going to be crazy. I love it because I, I go out there with my bases and try to make them like little dioramas. Uh, but that's for next time. Um, hopefully it'll be soon. I, I am a teacher and teaching has been really interesting this year um, and, and really tough, to be honest with you. And um, and doing more lesson plans is demanding more of my time and more of my time that gets devoted to my career is less time I have to hobby. So um, bear with me. Uh, I'm coming out with videos as quickly as I can. The good thing is since I'm a teacher, summer break is coming up and I should be able to get a lot of uh, things done during the summer. I'm really excited about that. Thank you again for joining me. And if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the miniatures paintbrush.